All right, we came to Lima for just a few hours, expecting to feast our eyes on some big city Peruvian culture. Instead, yeah, I'll be honest, this kind of smacked me in the face a little bit. We have just 12 hours on the ground in this metropolis of nearly 10 million people. Little did we know that 12 hour layover would leave us with a lump in our throat. It hits a little harder because these are the people that gave their lives, especially these people. If ever there was an eye-opening example of why you should never waste a long layover by sitting in the airport, this is it. And, you know, most people just stay in bed, you know, get an early night's sleep and uh, call it, but uh, that's not how we roll. And so we are going into town and checking out Mira Flores in this episode of Window Seat. couldn't have arrived at a more beautiful time. Sunset, golden hour, our flight descending over the Pacific Ocean as we arrive into the capital city of Peru. Of course, when we hit the ground, we were reminded of that annoying thing that happens so often at South American airports. They don't actually drop you off at the gate. They park in the middle of the tarmac and then you have to be bused to the terminal. A minor annoyance that was offset immediately by our discovery that our hotel for this half a day stay was literally across the parking lot from the airport. We're talking 30 yards from the terminal max. Which was handy because our window here was so short and we desperately wanted to see and do as much as we possibly could in 12 hours. which meant making a beeline for Miraflores. Word of warning, it is in the heart of Lima and it is a long way from the airport. Took us about 40 minutes in an Uber late in the evening, but it was worth it. It is one of the town's top tourist attractions, loaded with high rises, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. And as we quickly discovered, a mall that could have just as easily been located on South Beach. Same stuff you'd find in a lot of places though, but it seems clearly very popular amongst locals and actually tourists. You get a lot of restaurants, a lot of the shops you expect back home as well, but it's cool to come down here by the water and see it, even if it is nighttime. Yeah, it just shows you that even if you have a short layover, get into town, check things out, check another place off your bucket list, and really go for it. We're gonna see if there's something to eat downtown here um, in Miraflores, just to sort of uh, capture some of the local flavor. I've seen a couple of things down there, so not Chili's, not TGI Fridays, with those anytime. KFC. No offense to them. KFC. No offense to those places, but we're gonna try to see what we can find locally and go there. We went to a place in the mall because we're Americans after all. Sean got a ceviche sampler. I got some other thing that I really can't remember, which is probably a testament to how average it was. And then after a quick Nutella crepe because there's no better combo in the world, we were on our way on foot to check out more of the sights and sounds of Miraflores. And that is when our night went from celebrant to sobering in a flash. We stumbled onto this, something completely unexpected, something that changed everything about this trip into town. What exactly was this? Who are these people? Why are there portraits of Peruvians lighting up the night sky, stretching for an entire city block? We actually had to Google it to find out what this is. Embarrassed we didn't already know and completely humbled when we found out. Turns out this is a memorial to the country's frontline medical workers, doctors who died fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. The memorial popped up in early 2021 at the height of the coronavirus pandemic. It's on a quiet street right next to the ocean here in Miraflores. And as of now, there are more than 550 doctors memorialized right here. They call them pandemic soldiers, all of them who died from COVID-19. Row after row of men and women, some just in their 30s, who tried desperately to save some of the 220,000 people in this country who died from COVID-19, but couldn't save themselves from a pandemic that decimated this country's medical system. They got hit a lot harder down here than we did, and we got hit hard. And to see this, and it's people of all ages, and it, it's, and it, you know, it's, it, these are the ones that were there every single day. Some say these doctors, many of whom died in the early weeks and months of the pandemic, didn't have the proper personal protective equipment to protect themselves and were all but abandoned by a government ill-prepared to take on the rush of patients. One thing is clear, the sheer volume of black and white photos is jaw-dropping. This is just a small thing, but it's a big thing at the same time because it allows you to really truly see 
the impact it had. I mean, and this is just the medical professionals. This is not the rest of the country. Yeah, I'll be honest. This kind of smacked me in the face a little bit because, you know, we get we get to a place where we're back to normal. You know, we're moving around the world again, and this is something that we had to put on hold during the pandemic, and we're all anxious and excited to get out there and explore again, and you kind of forget what's taken place in the last three years, and then you stumble onto this, and you're like, whoa, and it takes you back to, you know, March of 2020. Um, and it reminds you of everything the world has been through in the last three years, and certainly everything this part of the world has been through in the last three years. And it just takes you right back and smacks you in the face. And uh, I, I think I needed this in some ways because, you know, I get to this place where you kind of forget and we want to forget, you know. Um, but this reminds you that we can't. I'll be honest, that is not something we expected to gain on this short trip into town, hoping to have an action-packed layover, but it's impossible to stare at all those faces and not instantly gain perspective about how lucky we all are to be able to go on with our lives when so many others couldn't. We had planned a trip to South America, to Peru, in September of 2020. It was all in the books, booked, ready to fly, and then of course the pandemic hit uh, in the spring of that year and put everything on hold. And you know, you get glum and you're like, oh, I can't do what I want to do, poor me, and I can't travel the world and and sort of get my life back to normal. And then you see this and you're like, there's 550 doctors here who walked into work every day trying to save the people of Peru and they lost their lives doing it. And it makes you feel a little selfish, certainly. And it, and it reminds you that your problems are small compared to what's gone on in the world in the last three years. Yes, we saw and did other things in Miraflores. We looked out over the water, heard the crashing waves on the beaches below, walked through some gorgeous parks, and heard the thump of music bellowing from the hotels, bars, and nightclubs we walked past. Everywhere we looked, we were surrounded by people who didn't have a care in the world. People who were able to put the agony of the last three years behind them, and at least for this night, forget about the pandemic and live their lives. But as we hopped back into an Uber and made that 40 minute drive back to the airport, we couldn't get that powerful memorial out of our heads. What a perfect reminder of the value of using a layover, no matter how long, to learn something about where you are, no matter how painful that something might be. So there you have it. You know, we only had really 12 hours total, but really five that we could actually go into town. So if you ever get the chance, just go ahead and do it. because. You're gonna regret sitting in an airport bar or your hotel room and not getting to see a city that you may otherwise never get to know at all. And even the little bit we got to see was totally worth being here. Thanks for watching this episode of Window Seat. Don't forget to hit subscribe to see more of our South American travels and our global adventures as we attempt to visit every country on the planet. We've already hit more than 70 of them. And feel free to hit like and share too. We're back with another episode next Friday. Meantime, feel free to watch one of these other episodes from Window Seat.